Hi internet, it's me, Doka. Welcome to my channel where I talk about my mental health and also whatever I want. If you're into that, make sure you subscribe so I can see you again later. I am really enjoying building this parasocial relationship with people who watch my videos. Also, it really helps me out if you like this video, but please only do it if you actually like the video. Before I get into what my video's about, Shout out to Saweetie. She really has all these McDonald's employees wearing a shirt with Saweetie across the chest. This girl is always in her bag. This woman, excuse me, is consistently in her bag. If you wonder why her music isn't good, this is my opinion, y'all, okay? So if you're a Saweetie fan, you, you might be offended, but whatever. Her music is bad on purpose because she's trying to be in that bag her music sounds like a boost mobile commercial it sounds like a tampax commercial because if it does get in a commercial that's money in her bag this woman is always in her bag i really feel like one day we finna wake up and they're gonna say so weedy is th the next billionaire kudos to you sweetie i want to talk about sororities and fraternities okay because i feel that they're dangerous I think they're dangerous and it's just wild to me it's wild to me the amount of shenanigans and scandals these, this, these organizations get into and they still have the audacity to fight tooth and nail to be on every campus they can be on now I haven't done much I haven't done like a lot of in-depth research on this topic I don't know who exactly who are the people who benefit the most from Greek life's existence. Um, I just know that it's sus and it's cults. There is cults. There are cults. It, it, it's a cult. Let me see where I'm supposed to turn. Okay. Right. So first and foremost, let me share my experience with Greek life because I went to a predominantly white school. I'm talking about white and black Greek life, by the way, okay? I think Greek life causes a problem that has nothing to do with race and just everything to do with cult behavior. And if these organizations would be serious with themselves about removing the cult behavior, then they could really actually become a benefit to young people. But they're not serious about removing cult behavior because my experience with Greek life is another one is gone, another student is gone after a party at Greek life, after a hazing incident with Greek life, after an essay with involving Greek life. There's just there is always a scandal involving Greek life and the schools try to punish the organization by banning them off campus or suspending them and they will fight tooth and nail to remain on campus and they will literally lie and say we don't do hazing anymore yes you do yes you do if you didn't do hazing anymore then why is another student gone hospitalized scarred for life why you are still hazing that's still some ish that y'all do now I fell for that okay when they said we don't do hazing anymore we don't do hazing anymore I fell for it and I wanted to be a part of Greek life now I ended up only joining an academic frat theta tau it's an engineering fraternity and in these academic fraternities and um, like social service fraternities, they don't they don't fall into this category. They're actually trying to do something good. They're clubs. They're they're fine. But these ones, like the Divine Nine and the you know the predominantly white ones, they they have a very bad toxic culture. And when I went to school. If a woman, if a young lady said that she was a sage in a frat house or a frat party, 
um, the they, the boys would come to each other's defense. They would say she's lying. They would say, well, both of them were drunk. They would say, no, she wanted it. She just regretted it in the morning. So she's a this, that, and the other. It was really a toxic culture. Uh, these boys were really offering themselves, not just from the hazing, but from the recreational usage. Um, but which may very well have been part of the hazing. I didn't get into it personally because I didn't know all of that stuff was happening. I didn't know how responsible is the organization for the bad things that are happening. But what I did know was that I would have to completely change who I was to be a part of this sorority. First of all, to join the sorority, you have to give off a certain energy, right? Like if you want to join Kappa Kappa Kappa, you have to, you have to give off ditzy blonde white girl energy. If you want to join AKA, you have to give off Kamala Harris energy. And I wasn't, I, I mean, you watch my videos, right? You know, I'm very independent and I am what they would call a GDI, a God dang independent, which I used to think was just a joke. But now after talking to some people, I'm like, it's really not a joke. Y'all really feel some kind of way about people like me who would just like to live my life the way I want to live it. Because I saw how they, they do control your life. Um, because I re I recognize and realize if I were to just somehow just put on a facade, you know, just like really not be myself and and put effort into this facade to get in, I would have to keep it up because you like you're required to be here and be here. There are certain things that you're required to do um, that take up your time. And not just things that you're required to do, but there's a way that you're required to be. Because if you don't behave and, you know, if you don't kind of think and behave and act a certain way, they will punish you for that. They'll punish you. I saw, I saw my friends that would join sororities, black and white. And they would tell me about their situations. And they would be like, you know, I just, I'm morally against ABC and I wouldn't do it. And now they're punishing me. I still have to pay for the sorority, but now they remove this perk, this perk, this, this, this. And it's like, so they, they try to punish you for stepping out of line. That sounded, that sounds like cult behavior. I didn't call it cult behavior when I was in college, but it, I was like, I don't think I could mentally handle that. I, could, I couldn't I could mentally handle that. Now I was having a conversation with these ladies and they were telling me that it's even worse than this because the hazing for both boys and girls involves being assaulted, being abused, sexually and f physically drop your dr drop your pants bear your behind we need to stick something up there this is for boys and girls push 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 her out of a moving vehicle push him out of a moving vehicle um let's attempt to drown Let's see how long you can hold your breath. And actually, the year I went to college, a couple of students were drowned as part of a hazing ritual. They, they were gone. They were gone. All the while, this is happening. And the organizations continue to say, we don't do that anymore. 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 But you do. And students are still joining because it looks like fun. Bruh, I want to be in the step line. I wanna I wanna do the cute dance move. 
I want to go to a party and all, automatically have friends there and hang out and have fun and turn up. I want to have, I want to have people who, who I'm going to continue to connect with after I graduate and we start living life and getting into our careers. Like you want, you want all of those things. I want the perks. The, the white sororities had a lot of perks. I want those perks. There were a lot of rich. There were a lot of rich people there. I want to be associated. I want to be with them. I want to be associated with them. I want to. I want to be invited to the yacht. I want to be invited to the yacht, honey. I want to be. I want my summer vacation to be on a yacht because I happen to be in a sorority where the junior junior has parents that they decided to go to Ibiza so they left the house empty and and we can all come in and crash and stay there I want it I want all those things that sounds like fun and and uh, I never would have known what kind of sacrifice would come with it for me, just changing who I was wasn't sacrifice enough. But there are people who, they don't need to change who they are. Like, they would fit in. They they are naturally like Kamala Harris. They are naturally like the Disney Blonger. They're, they are naturally like that. They would fit in perfectly fine. And they can accept, okay, this rule, that rule, this rule, that rule, this rule, that rule. But even those people who thought they truly belonged there have stories of abuse and this leads to trauma I feel like when you're part of a cult that you really didn't you didn't know what it was you thought it was something else you thought it was something good for you you thought you were changing your life you thought you were living your life's purpose you thought you found your home and then you realize this is a cult there's trauma there and I personally have spent this whole flipping year undoing my trauma because I worked at a place where my boss, I'm just going to call him my boss because basically that's how he was. My boss wanted to have a cult. He was really trying to have a cult and I didn't really understand it before, you know, when he would try, when he would publicly humiliate somebody simply because you know the way the way they get their sales is different than how he how he wants it and he would publicly humiliate them or you know there is an agent she was a single mom she didn't have anyone to watch her kids so she would bring her child with her to go see clients she would bring her child with her to go see clients and I don't know. I think maybe I'm I think maybe it worked. I think maybe the kid helped her make more sales, okay? Because she was doing really good. And the boss would publicly humiliate her. Like what kind what kind of salesperson brings their child into a client's home? I didn't realize this was cult behavior. I didn't realize he's trying to brainwash us to behave a certain way because the next day, anyone and everyone who was bringing their child with them to anything work-related, they stopped, right? He was, he was trying to create a cult. And when I realized this is what he was doing, and when I realized, you know, this is abuse. This is abusive. Um... I left and it's like once you realize but let me tell you the trauma already affects you before you even realize somebody is trying to abuse you the trauma can affect you because I was having really horrifically bad anxiety before I stopped working for this for this guy I was having very bad anxiety that's why I was making all my posts about CBD oil and and trying Delta 8 and 
because my anxiety was through the roof like oh my I had never had anxiety and panic attacks with that consistency and that frequency and then when I left and I realized oh this is probably uh, my response to trauma it stayed with me and I continued having anxiety and it made it made it made getting my life together very difficult and I'm very lucky that that I have a partner because it would have what the the status that we're at now would have taken us taken if I was by myself it would have taken me a lot more time to get to and part of getting things together for me was the mental health aspect of it and I did ketamine infusions for depression I am on Atanzia for the ADHD, but the anxiety was still there. Even though the depression is getting under control, the ADHD is manageable. Why is this anxiety still there? I started doing ketamine assisted therapy, talk therapy. It's where you take like a little bit, just a little bit of ketamine. And someone, someone in my last video was like, isn't ketamine like a horse tranquilizer? Yes, it's also FDA approved for me mental health, okay? Try it sometime, maybe if you need it but you just take a little bit enough to like you know open you up and you do talk therapy and it has been very helpful for me um I'm not saying my anxiety is gone it's not completely gone but I am in a much better place now than where I was before uh this form of talk therapy I was doing regular talk therapy and it just wasn't it wasn't enough and I was like I need I need, I need oomph, I need some oomph, I need something else. Um, and I'm coming to grips with this idea that some people, they do like cults. Like some people just want to be a part of something and it's every part of, every bit of it is worth it, right? There are people who still work for that guy who I really feel like they should quit. And they are being abused. And they won't quit because like a cult, when you try to leave a cult, you're demonized, you are ostracized, you lose your support system. And some people are not willing to go through that. But there are people who are perfectly happy there. And there was a time where I was perfectly happy. Well, not perfectly happy, but it was fun, right? My friend was telling me about how she quit Hillsong because she realized Hillsong is a cult. If you never heard of Hillsong, it's this church. Um, they're the ones who made that. It's beautiful music. That song is like, You will upon the water. What's the name of it? Ocean and I will call upon your name. That song. And when the oceans rise okay whatever that song is right that that place is a cult too she experienced the same thing she wanted to she went to their college she wanted to be a warrior for christ and and when she first got there she was so happy was so fun and then she realized it's some bs right and then and then the lady I spoke to today, she is an AKA. She tried to leave. She tried to denounce her membership. They wouldn't allow her to. Um, but same thing. At first, it's so much fun. And then you realize this isn't good. This isn't healthy. It's not good for your mental health. So I just wanted to make this video to share my two cents on it and have, have this dance out in the, in the stratosphere. Listen, I make these videos. Lately, I've been making them almost every day. And about 30, 30, 40, 20 people watch it. And I make these videos because I know somebody out there just needs to hear some validation. They just need to hear I'm not crazy. They just need to hear... They just need to hear that it's okay 
to just like not be interested in toxicity <laughs> and that's okay but especially these fraternities and sororities that's a hot mess because you're dealing with young people who are coming to college to better their life get an education and you're selling them a dream of friendship and connections but you're not telling them that you're lying when you say that the abusive behaviors and rituals are gone because they're not that's a big problem to me so anyway thank you for watching if you dug this video give it a thumbs up <clears throat> I'd love to know your thoughts below in the comment section especially because I've never been a part of the Divine Nine or a white social fraternity so there's a lot that I probably don't know <clears throat> I've only been a part of the academic fraternity um, so if you feel like I'm just way off base you have every right to go go ham in the comments I'm not even I usually don't let crap slide but I feel like you know what I might just be talking out my behind let me know in the comments below thanks for watching until next time much love much luck peace out